Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, this is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International with the White House Daily Devotional Bible Reading, where I read three chapters of the Holy Bible, the Word of God, the King James Version, uh, each day with my family as a part of our family devotions. To encourage you to read the Holy Bible in a year's time as well. And if you don't have time to read three chapters, you can listen in on the reading of the Word of God each day. Um, And to encourage you to read the Holy Bible in a year's time as well. And uh, if for some reason you do not choose to read three chapters of the Word of God, the Holy Bible each day, feel free to listen in on us reading it as you go to work or before you go to bed at night or before you hit the snooze button in the morning. We are using a modified version of the five-day Bible reading plan. It is modified because we read the Holy Bible every day of the week, seven days a week, and or seven days a week, and not just five days a week. The benefit of using the five-day Bible reading plan is you can read the entire Bible in a chronological order and reading plan that helps the Bible make sense to you. Today we are reading Genesis chapter 1, Psalm 19, and Mark 1. Dr. A. W. Toza said, The Word of God, well understood and religiously obeyed, is the shortest route to spiritual perfection, and we must not select a few favorite passages to the exclusion of others. Nothing less than a whole Bible can make a whole Christian. Charles Haddon Spurgeon said, Nobody ever outgrows Holy Scripture. The Bible widens and deepens with our years. Genesis. <clears throat> Pardon me. Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. 
and God invited and God divided the light from the darkness and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day and God said let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so and God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day and God said let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear and it was so and God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called he seas and God saw that it was good and God said let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after the after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the third day and God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and god made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also and god set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and god saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day and god said let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven and god created great whales and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind and god saw that it was good i'm in verse 22 and god blessed them saying be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas 
and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all of the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life i have given every green herb for meat and it was so and god saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Our next chapter is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the son, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. 
Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Mark chapter 1. the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river Jordan, in the river of Jordan, pardon me, confessing their sins. And John was clothed, clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water. But he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven, saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little farther thence, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. And they went 
into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at even, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many that were sick of divers diseases, and cast many devils, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him allow, uh, followed after him. Allow me to read that again. Verse 36. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and cast out devils. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him, and forthwith, and forth, forthwith, and forthwith sent him away, and saith unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. 
But he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city but was without in desert places and they came to him from every quarter. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your holy word. Help us to love it, to cherish it, and to obey it. My heart, my spirit, my mind, my soul has already been stirred just by the reading of your holy word. And Lord, help us to obey it and help us to share it with others. By the power of your Holy Ghost, in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, beloved, when I was a teenager, I wanted to get wisdom and knowledge. So I set out uh, to read the Big Family Bible. that was kept in the living room and that many families had in those days. We don't see them much today, but these are huge Bibles. But I couldn't get past Genesis chapter 2 before I got bored with reading the Bible. I just could not understand it. I found out later in life that you have to believe on Christ and get saved before you can understand the Holy Word of God, the Bible. So, so here is how I became a Christian, and here is how you can too. First, dear friend, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's law, the God who created the heaven and the earth. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Second, accept the fact, dear friend, that there is a penalty, there is a punishment for sin. The Bible states in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. We die because of our sin. Our bodies go to a grave. Our soul goes to hell because of our sin if we don't trust in Christ Jesus as our Savior. And that leads me to my third point. Thirdly, accept the fact that you are on the road to hell. Jesus Christ said in Matthew, 10, uh, Matthew 18, 8. Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 8, in the Holy Word of God. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Also, the Holy Bible states in Revelation 21, 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. <clears throat> now hell in the lake of fire, dear friends, is bad news. Uh, but I have some good news for you. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who took away the sins of the world, said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today to save your soul and to change your life so that you can understand the Bible better and learn it and do it and be blessed by it. And Jesus will save you today. Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Saved to what? Saved to heaven. So, dear friend, if you are willing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, believing in your heart that he is the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world and that he died for your sins, was buried and rose from the dead. Please pray with me this simple prayer and mean it from your heart, believing in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day early one Sunday morning. Repeat after me the sinner's prayer, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have done some bad things in my life. I am sorry for my sins, and today I choose to turn from my sins with your help. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. I believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose on the third day. I trust Jesus Christ as my Savior, and by your grace I will follow him as Lord from this day forward. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life today. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you believed in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again, allow me to say congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please email me at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Dear friend, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good is my prayer.